If you're planning a trip to Alaska, there's several different routes you can take. Staying close to the west, you can take the Alaska Marine Highway, the Cassiar Highway, or the Alcan. But if you ask me, no route is complete without a visit to Dawson City. This bustling little town is built on the bones of a time long ago, but life in Dawson is much the same as it always was. There are no sidewalks, there are boardwalks. The only pavement is the highway, and that ends at the ferry crossing. The economy is fueled by miners and prospectors, and every weekend they flood into town to enjoy Yukon Territory's only casino. Downtown, some of the buildings date back more than a century. Some are sinking, some are collapsing, but the laws and building codes have been grandfathered in, making Dawson City a living time capsule. Most people come to Dawson either for work or for the sour toke cocktail, but I'm interested in finding some history that dates back a little further, and I'm fortunate to have some local connections. My friend Asia and I are heading deep into the gold fields in search of some relics. Some very large relics. What is a dredge? Well, here in the Klondike, there are great big wooden hauled structures that float in their own pond and they process material through them and they're basically looking for gold. So a dredge operates by digging in front of it, processing the material and the dirt through it, and in the process of doing that it removes the gold from the ground. They have a riffle system and the riffle system causes a vortex and the vortex drives the gold into the matting. The dredges started coming into the Klondike here in the, as, as early as 1900. I think there was even one in before 1900. So, I mean, they, they mechanized mining. So they, they were massive improvements over a pick and a shovel, right? And that's the next thing. Now, they weren't the perfect machine because here in the Klondike, we still have permafrost, permanently frozen ground, and they can't work through uh, the permafrost, so the ground still had to be prepared for the dredges. So usually they have a crew out there anywhere from three to five years before the, the dredge would go through. So they'd have a crew go out, they'd remove all the trees and the moss, then they'd set up high-powered pressure washer monitors, and they would wash the thawed material away, and then they'd put steam points in. About every 12 feet apart because a steam point would thaw basically a six foot circle. So if they're every 12 feet apart, they'd touch and they'd thaw the ground as they went down. And there'd be whole crews in front of the dredges preparing the ground. A dredge itself only took four people to run it. Dredge number four in the Klondike, which was the largest wooden haul dredge in the world at the time, uh, it was capable of digging about 17 feet above the ground and about 37 feet below the ground. So it's a big, massive machine. So the bucket would go up and down like this. And then of course they could turn a little bit and go up and down. And then once the, they dug everywhere they could dig, then they would do what was called a step. So then they would step about 15 feet forward and start the whole process over again. They put it in at the mouth of Bonanza in 1940 and it worked about 13 kilometers up Bonanza and, and its last season was 1959. So 19 years to go 13 kilometers. So yeah, it didn't move at a great speed. <laughs> the Yukon Consolidated Mining Company, who was the last company to run them, when they shut down in 1966, all of their dredges shut down. I do know that dredge number 11 was the last dredge and that dredge is still located on Hunker Creek Road. And it shut down in October of 1966. I've been doing dredge tailings myself for quite a few years. My brother and I started in the dredge tailings in uh, 1984. And our first year 
we were taking, we were sluicing hmm, maybe 50 yards an hour and we were getting well over an ounce an hour. We were pretty sure we were gonna be millionaires. Yeah, second year didn't work out like that. <laughs> Same area, but uh, just a different dredge. So it all depends on who the dredge master was or not even the dredge, who the winch man was and how, he, how much he paid attention to what he was doing as to how efficient the dredges were. I don't know that anything really replaced the dredge. Here, and I can only speak to the Klondike because this is my home and this is what I know, uh, the dredges, like I said, the last one operated in 1966. You got to remember the price of gold then was like $36 an ounce, right? So it was tough to make a living. There was still mining going on. There was still what they call Ma and Pa operations out there doing some work, but it was very, uh, I mean, it, it was more about lifestyle to them and something that they loved because, I mean, they'd have to rush into town at the end of the season and to get the best jobs possible before the other miner got in and got their best job. So they, it, was, it was a really hard way to make a living. But really, Dawson City in the Klondike is the only gold rush city in the world that's still mining. It's mine, been mining there since gold was discovered and is still mining today. Last year, I believe, uh, they produced over 80,000 ounces, which you know, translates into $160 million. So for 100 some plus operators, that's a fair contribute to the economy. Yeah. The Yukon is actually full of these old dredges. You just have to know how to find them. And lucky for me, we didn't get lost. Asia didn't really know how to find it, but we're here. And we're very lucky that it's not in the water. What's really neat about this, this looks like ground right here. It's not, that's just the floor of this massive boat. It's full of water, but this thing used to float. So this is kind of like a channel that it's sitting in here and it would have mined its way into this spot. Not sure what these are. Patent in 1934. Interesting. No idea what that is. There's three of them sitting here. Okay. At first I thought this was a fireplace, but it is not. This is though, a boiler. And then I guess we'll start with the dredging side of things and then work our way over to the sluice inside. Look at all these different arms up here like some sort of linkage system. Not sure what that did, to be honest. The old stairs still nice and sturdy. Wow. <laughs> this is one piece of wood. Look at how wide that is. That is a massive chunk of timber. And this frame would have stood up and held up the bucket section. And that was the digging end of this thing. These buckets would just spin and scoop dirt as they went. 
bring it up here and drop it into the sluice. Look at that gear on that thing. Friggin' massive. And then these are all sluices going here, which is strange because I also saw them on this side. So as the buckets rotated up here, they really just went around, dumped it down there, and then kept spinning. Pretty wild nature experience happening right now. Asia has summed up some whiskey jacks. <laughs> Seems like you scared them away. No, I just fed them too good. I'm gonna teach you guys how to call in a whiskey jack. Mmm, good sandwich. Good thing I have a little bit extra also. steps are a little bit sketchy. Look at this old door frame. <laughs> it's all that's left of that. sort of marking on this one this is neat though this is some sort of run here it used to go out there it's the only wooden one I've found a neat little spot here this panel this chunk of tin has that logo on it it says Apollo and you can see just the remnants of made in Canada really interesting logo though it's very Greek I was hoping there'd be a way to get up there but I don't think so there's power running all through this you can see the little junction boxes sitting down there's one right there but this is interesting look at this old school style plug I don't know where that's from So I'm guessing this shelving unit probably was up there and there was a second floor. It's fallen down, but it's neat. You can still read some of what used to be in there. Yep, onions in that one. Wow, how neat is that? Wow, those buckets go way down there. I wonder if this thing kind of dug itself to a halt and has just been sitting here ever since, or if they just upgraded and retired it, but the buckets go way down there. Here's a good example 
you can see the edge of the dredge there. That would have been the part that's floating and then all the way over to there. But most of this is at ground level now, so it's hard to tell. Let's see if we can climb up here. Wow, look at the bend in that. I'm curious about this. Why do you guys think they chose to use a whole bunch of smaller belts instead of just one large belt? I guess then some could break and it still would keep going. Not sure. I'm gonna go out here and see if I can get a view of the whole thing. There she is. Beauty. Once again, Dawson City has provided us some amazing adventuring. But this year with Alaska still ahead of us, I only plan for a few days in the area. So if you guys wanna see some more Dawson City content, I actually spent a few weeks here last year, got to go and do some gold mining, went to the Paddle Wheeler Graveyard. So I'll link those videos down in the description below. But most of all, Thanks for watching, everybody. As always, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints. I'll catch you on the next one. The sparrow's not worried about tomorrow, or the troubles to come. The lily's not thinking about the seasons, the drought or the flood. The tree that's planted by the water isn't phased by the fire. So why should I?